Greetings everybody out there in the watch loving world. I guess I should start this video off by having a mask on and I thought about it but anyway I'm not in the public. I'm on the edge of the wilderness here in the Midwestern United States. It is seven o'clock on the money and I'm wearing my Tudor Hydronaut 2 reference 20040. Eh, nice watch. Get them for a pretty good deal now. But I was just thinking on the reasons why people buy watches. One reason, they just love watches. Um, that's one thing. And then they buy them for investments too, I guess. Well, people keep telling me that Rolex is an investment. Uh, this Tudor, I just like it. It's a nice watch. It's going to hold some kind of value. But it's not going to hold value like a Rolex will. Now, uh... I'm kind of looking around and trying to figure out what to add to the collection next. I really love Hamilton watches by the Swatch Group. Uh, they're owned by Swatch. And uh, they have the Hamilton Khaki King that has the, uh, the day of the week up at the 12 o'clock and the uh, date there. And, and for the price of it, um, that, that's a lot of... Uh, that's a lot of complications for a watch for the price you can get them. Uh, and, and they hold their value pretty good. I mean, they're $350 to $500, but they will hold their value. And then I was looking at the Rolex uh, Explorer 1, the uh, older model. And uh, they, they hold their value, but it, it's a three-handed watch. It doesn't have a date on it. I know it's a basic watch. It's kind of like a field watch. But they're very, very nice, and they hold their value pretty good, but you're going to be spending around the $5,000 mark for that watch that has the uh, seconds, minutes, and hours on it, and that's the only complications it has. And um, now I, ha I had a uh, Rolex Milgauss, and it was a three-hander. And i tell you, one of my favorite watches I had was a 34-millimeter Air King, Silver. It had a uh, the stainless uh, 904L stainless bracelet and everything, and um, it actually looked pretty good on a, my 8-inch wrist. I didn't see a problem with it because when I was a kid uh, 50 years ago, uh, everybody had everybody wore a 34 millimeter. That was the average 36, and uh, we didn't hear about a 40 millimeter watch. So, but anyway, I'm looking. Uh, so. The Explorer with the 369 on the dial, that's, that's a beautiful option. But it's around five. To get them new, they're about six and a half thousand U.S. dollars. Um, now I can go for the, um, the Oyster Perpetual, which is kind of Rolex's original. It, it's the granddaddy of watches. <clears throat> um, the, probably has its lineage back to 1926. Every Rolex says Oyster Perpetual on it. But I think the, the OP, the 39 and the 36, and the 34, I think they're the, um, the their lineage, they're descended. They don't have another name but Oyster Perpetual. And I think they're the ones that can be traced back to 1926. Um, and, you know, but they don't, they hold their value somewhat. You can probably walk into an authorized dealer and the uh, 34 millimeter, they're five thousand one hundred dollars right now plus tax. The 36 millimeter is running at fifty four hundred dollars, and the 39 millimeter is still running at five thousand seven hundred U.S. dollars. Now with tax on that, you're going to end up with six thousand dollars in a watch. They're beautiful. They're modern Rolexes, and they are going to hold some some value, but they're not going to be like the uh, steel sports watches that the demand has went crazy for them because I, I have people telling me that Rolex has a new metal out have you heard of it? It's called unobtainium yeah uh, you can't get your hands on them and so I know the factory's opening up here and everything soon but I'm sure they're um, they're still going to be unobtainable pretty much and they're keeping uh, you know I guess Rolex is probably the best at supply and demand, and it's the hype of the watch. You have to have, be on a waiting list. Um, 
I don't want to be on a waiting list. I, it, to me, it's just not worth it. And an, another um, watch you got out there, though, you, you had the Oyster Perpetual, the 34, the 36 millimeter, or the 39. And those are nice watches. Now, the 36, you can get the uh, dials with 3, 6, and 9 on it, just like the Explorer. And it's, it's a beautiful watch. But so you got the Explorer, they're about 5,000 used. You got the Oyster Perpetual 36, they're 5,500 uh, brand new. Uh, they're in, in the high fours used. And but another watch to look at, and I see people putting videos about don't get a, a Rolex Datejust that's uh, vintage or whatever. And I'm going to have to check and see how far does it go back between modern and vintage. But people say don't get a vintage uh, date just. And, but they're, they're reasonably priced. There's a lot of them out there. They're, they're, they are obtainable. And, and if you have to have them serviced, um, they're serviceable. They are not built like a modern Rolex, but they're still a Rolex. You know, that 1953 Submariner that's worth a ton of money, or that military uh, sub from the 60s that's worth 100000 plus. Um, yeah, they're not built like a modern uh, Rolex either, but they're worth a ton of money to people. Uh, people love them. They want to get their hands on them. But I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm just kind of looking around at things, and we'll see which way I go. Uh, but the... Um, the uh, vintage uh, date just uh, they're looking pretty good and some good deals on them and the uh, air kings the 34 and the 36 millimeter there's some pretty good deals on them too so i'll be making another video and uh, show you but uh, if you like the videos uh, comment subscribe thank you to everybody who subscribed to my uh, channel and uh, in the end remember to keep your watches all wound up